how do you make a distinction between being curious about something, wanting to know how this makes a person tick, how it will affect how they will be president, versus saying, if you belong to this faith, you cannot uh, become president. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, from the pulpit to the polling booth, the voters need to have faith in a candidate's faith. What a candidate stands for and how a candidate worships are both topics of discussion on the presidential campaign trail. And with two Mormons vying for the 2012 presidential nomination, the beliefs and practices of the Church of Latter-day Saints have been under new scrutiny. It isn't a candidate's faith, but how a candidate's religious views will shape their policies, notes senior fellow E.J. Dion as he takes a closer look. E.J., most of us have religious beliefs. Politicians do, too, of course, but very often what our politicians believe becomes dialogue on the campaign trail. This election cycle, it seems that we're all focused on Mormonism. It's a uniquely American religion. It was founded uh, here. Um, and I always like to underscore that every American is a member of a religious minority. Um, you know, there is no dominant sect, no dominant church, no dominant faith. What Mormons may believe about the afterlife uh, or how their worship services are conducted, it does not seem to me these should ever be public political questions, because they have no effect on you and on me and on all who are non-Mormons. On the other hand, if someone, a Mormon, a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, has beliefs that directly impact what they would do as president, uh, a religious pacifist, obviously, although I doubt we will elect a pacifist uh, as president, um, somebody whose views uh, uh, on social justice are greatly shaped by their faith, somebody whose views on abortion or gay marriage are shaped by their faith. These are legitimate public questions. So I think that what we have to figure out how to do in the public square is um, ask those questions and, and raise debates about those areas where what a politician will do based on their religious beliefs will affect everybody else and those areas where they won't. And so there's a public role for religion. We shouldn't try to drive religion out of the public square, but that means that you know, religion, religious people can be legitimately queried about how their religious views affect their public actions. Well, certainly there are misconceptions about the tenets of any faith. And those sometimes get blown up into full-fledged campaign issues. A lot of African Americans remember the years uh, long ago when the Mormon Church had sort of rather strong strictures, let us say, against African Americans. It's fascinating historically that Mitt Romney's dad, George Romney, the governor of Michigan, who was a really staunch advocate of civil rights, played a role in the Mormon Church to try to push back against uh, that, to make the Mormon Church open as it is uh, today. Um, but there is some memory of that. And then within the political sphere, there's controversy over the fact that the Mormon church played a big role um, in the gay marriage uh, referendum battle in California. Um, when it's some polling that our coll my colleague Bill Galston and I have done with uh, uh, Robbie Jones at the Public Religion Research Institute shows that sort of there are two streams of anti-Mormon feeling. One comes more from conservative evangelicals, and there's another liberal stream that is more critical, not so much on religious grounds, but because either of this history or, or because of the battles over gay rights. We know that evangelical Christians tend to vote Republican. Do Mormons fall into one camp or another, more Democratic in thought or more Republican perhaps? Over the last 20 years, um, Mormons have become more Republican than they used to be. Now, some of that is just the states Mormons live in have become more Republican, Utah uh, and Idaho in particular, not so much in Nevada, which also has a substantial uh, Mormon population. Um, but there, there are still important uh, Mormon Democratic politicians, notably Harry Reid from Nebraska, who's a Democratic leader uh, in the Senate, the Udall brothers in the Senate, uh, Jim Matheson, a Democrat from Utah. So uh, there's a kind of myth that all Mormons are Republicans. They're not. And going back historically, uh, Utah was a Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Roosevelt state, uh, distinguished Democratic senator from Utah, Frank Moss. Utah had a lot of Democratic governors. But now, um, you know, since uh, pretty much Reagan's election, um, uh, the, um, a very substantial majority of Mormons have voted uh, Republican. In 1999, George W. Bush said that Jesus Christ was his favorite philosopher. 
you wrote about that speech and drew certain conclusions which you say are still viable to this day in this campaign, in every campaign. He was asked to explain why Jesus was his favorite political philosopher. And he said, well, um, you know, I can't really tell you that because if you haven't had this experience, you wouldn't know what it is. And um, I wrote at the time that that's the answer that bothered me because I think in a pluralist society like ours, you have an obligation to explain how your faith connects to your public life to those who may not share it. There's an obligation to be talking beyond your own faith. Now, I wrote that and a very dear friend of mine who's evangelical said, well, that wasn't fair to Bush because that's how we evangelicals talk about our faith. And so I realized that this was a sort of a, a beam in my own eye, something I didn't quite see myself. But I still think the intuition is right that it is perfectly legitimate to bring your religious faith into, into the public square. And it may be essential because if it's really important, you voters ought to know about it. But I do think that when you apply um, religious thought to public problems, you have to talk about it in ways that are accessible to those who don't necessarily uh, share your faith. Well, why should the American people even care about how their politicians worship? There's some polling that suggests that a lot of Americans think that people who have some faith in God are more likely to be moral than other people. Now, I've, I've had this uh, argument uh, before with people, and, and uh, I'm a believer, but I know an awful lot of non-believers who are awfully good and generous people. Now, and once you press people on that, they realize, yeah, there, there's this person I know who's an agnostic or an atheist who's one of the best people I know. But there is this sense that religious faith is more likely to make someone a little more, perhaps they're accountable to God, to something higher uh, than themselves. Um, the polling shows that uh, uh, Americans still aren't ready to elect an atheist as president, and, uh, or at least someone who is openly atheist as president. I've always joked we don't really know if we've ever elected an atheist as president. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brooklyn's events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.